Gracious Heavenly Father, I just come into your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for all that you have done through this ministry and continue to do in the lives of those who, whom you have directed to the truth which frees them and gives them peace, joy, and rest in Christ. I just ask that you would filter out all the foolishness but seal to our hearts that which is truth and only truth, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com I've always resisted the temptation to refer to any one video as any more important than another, but I believe that this one particular video is, uh, at least I hope, to present this video in such a way as to where that you will see how that everything hinges, pivots on what, how we approach this 12th chapter in Romans. Just as somewhat of an overview, uh, service, worship, uh, we see here in this chapter is based on the all-important doctrine of God's grace that preceded the 12th chapter the previous 11 chapters and our presenting our bodies unto God as who we are the context here folks is is service ministry worship in relationship to doctrine not apart from it service built on what's been said i believe a serious look at at all of these imperatives will reveal characteristics of our lord as as he himself lives his life in and through our lives by faith that he does he brings about the change it's not something that we do on our own I want to say that right from the very outset. We're not under law, but grace. Right from the beginning, we see how that our identity plays a significant, highly significant role in our understanding this. Okay, so we've got some ground to cover, so let's just get right into it. Verse 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. And as I pointed out, a proportion there in the text is, is the Greek word uh, analogion. It's, it's, where, it's a, analogy is what the word means. Analogy of the faith. Uh, prophecy, the revelation of God's divine will comparable to or similar to, analogous to, the faith verse 7 or ministry uh, 
on ministering the let us wait there is not there in the original text uh, I think I pointed this out uh, before too that's table waiter or he that teaches on teaching that is doctrine uh, we are to be, the text is telling us, we are, we are to be a servant and attend to teaching only that which is doctrine. And our Lord himself did both. Verse 8, or he that exhorts on, on exhortation, and, and I pointed out the word is comfort. Our Lord did that. He that giveth, if that's your gift, uh, by God's grace that God has given you, uh, the the word is means to give a share of. Let him do it with simplicity. The word there being liberally. Christ did that. He that ruleth uh, leads with diligence. That's the word is zeal, enthusiasm. If you're going to lead, do it with enthusiasm. Christ did that. He that showeth mercy, not not giving, that's not giving what is deserved. Uh, uh, people, some people have asked me, what's the difference, Steve, between grace and mercy? Well, grace is is our, our getting what we uh, uh, did not deserve, whereas mercy is not getting what we do deserve. So. Uh, he that showeth mercy, not, that is not giving what is deserved, with cheer, cheerfulness, uh, the word is, is hilarion, it's, it means hilarity. Well, our Lord did that. Uh, let love, unconditional favor, we, know, we understand that as, as unconditional love, the word is agape be without dissimulation without the word there is hypocrisy in other words let the love be sincere abhor uh, hate or detest is literally the word detest hate that which, or detest that which is evil and the word implies all the miseries that go with it and cleave to that is glued the word is glued to that which is or concerns the believer's good. Now Christ certainly did that. Be kindly affectioned, brotherly love, that's the word is brotherly love, one to another with brotherly love, and the word is implies family, family love. Uh, in the two words we see it, the text literally states, be kindly affectioned, that is, brotherly love one to another with family love. In honor, that is, uh, the word is per, uh, perceived value or worth, whatever you consider something to be worth. Uh, literally, the, it, it, the word is price. Preferring, that is, modeling the exhibiting proper behavior so others can follow the one that's going first one another and we know Christ did that not slothful slow that is the the word uh, implies dragging one's feet or uninterested not slothful in business uh, speedy diligence uh, fervent to bubble over because hot enough to boil, literally boiling with interest or desire. That's what the, the word means. In spirit serving, to willingly give over the prerogative to be not self-governing. Not self-governing. Uh, the Lord. Uh, Lord being uh, su master, supreme in authority. Well, our Lord did all of that. Rejoicing, that is, to, to delight in God's grace. That's literally what rejoicing is. To experience God's grace or favor. Be conscious, glad for His grace 
in hope, and that's confident expectation. That's not wishful thinking. Biblical hope is guaranteed expectation, so confident expectation. Patient, that's the word is, is from the word minnow, abide. It's, it's, to, it's an intense form of, of the word abide, where Jesus said, abide in me. It's uh, uh, the intense form of that word. Patient, an intense and abiding in tribulation. Uh, and that tribulation being the word meaning uh, pressure. It's what, what constricts or, or rubs together. It's used of a narrow place that hems someone in. Especially internal pressure that causes somebody to, to feel confined or restricted without options. You're, you're like in a, in a corner. Uh, continuing instant, attend to constantly in prayer. Well, we have to say that our Lord did all of that. And then verse 13, distributing, share in, have a share of, have fellowship with, to the necessity, the needs of saints, that's saints being those set apart, holy, given to hospitality, uh, friendly, uh, being a, a friend, friendliness shown to strangers, pursuing, that is zealously, the, the word pursuing is interesting, it's, it's, it means to zealously persecute or hunt down, earnestly pursue, okay, so the negative of the word means persecute. Now, uh, Christ did all that. Bless. That's to speak well of, to praise them which persecute. Uh, the negative of, of pursuing hospitality to strangers, same word. Uh, bless and curse not. That's, you know, to not speak well of. The opposite of praise. Well, Christ did all that. Though he did reserve the right to, to curse because he himself was God. Rejoice, that is to delight in God's grace. Be conscious, glad for his grace with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Uh, the word is literally aud audible weeping, m to mourn or to lament. Now, we know Christ did that. Be of the same mind, verse 16, toward one another, to have understanding, to think, uh, Mind not high things, that's conceited, the word there is conceited, but condescend to be carried away with, be led, uh, is the word, be, to be carried away with, be led to men. Now the word men is not there in the original text. Uh, of low estate. This is, this is not a negative term, but a positive one, meaning inner lowliness describing the person who depends on the Lord rather than self, lowly, humble, those being uh, God-reliant rather than self-reliant. Be, become, not wise, the word is intelligent, in your own conceits. Now the word conceits is not there in the original text, only the word yourselves. Don't become intelligent in yourselves with the exception of Christ reserving for himself those characteristics that only God can have, he also did all of that. Uh, recompense, return as a payment to no man evil for evil. Uh, provide to think before showing necessary forethought uh, to act properly. Things honest, beautiful, good, in the sight of, in the face of all men. Our Lord did that. If it be possible, and the word is, is dunitas, strong, mighty, powerful, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably. That is, live in the condition of God's peace with all men. Well, we know Christ did that. And dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. That is, dispense justice. 
or punish, but rather give place unto wrath. That's a settled anger. It comes from the verb arago, meaning to swell. Uh, not a sudden outburst, but referring to God's fixed, controlled, passionate feeling against sin. A settled indignation. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And Christ did that. Verse 20, Therefore, on the contrary, says the text, If thine enemy hungry, feed him. And what's interesting there is, is the word is means to feed by putting a bit of crumb or food into the mouth, to feed with morsels. I believe the context is first and foremost spiritual. Uh, I'm going to take that as being don't lay it on too thick. If he, if he thirst, give him drink, water him, irrigate him. Uh, is literally what the word means. For in, in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head, which uh, the word implies that's the burning pain of shame and remorse which the man feels whose hostility is repaid by love. That's the only kind of, of vengeance the you know, the Christian is at liberty to do. And so Christ did all that. Be not overcome, that is... Uh, you know, come off as victorious, a term used of battle, of evil, but overcome evil with good. And we know that our Lord certainly did that. So, that's taking it all the way to the end of the chapter, folks. And, uh, and so now we come to the interesting part for, as far as I'm concerned about all this. <laughs> Here's what we know, folks, and this is, uh, I, I really implore you all to listen very carefully. To at least what I have to say about this, and, and I don't ask anybody to agree with me. All right. Folks, the law can't do any of what we were just taught. As I went through all of these, they seem to be more uh, a change of mind, more of a change of mind, a particular mindset than just mere acts, okay, or laws to be performed in the flesh. A renewal of the mind, and, and I sat and I wondered, well, where have I heard that before? which sent me scurrying back to verse 2, where I read, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I'm blown, now I'm blown away. Amazing. Amazing how that the, the text is constructed. Folks, I hope you get this. I hope you don't miss this. I could not be any more sincere than what I am right now. Dearly beloved, doctrine governs the way that we present our bodies unto God, which results in a mind renewal, which results in transformation, which results in Christ fulfilling these imperatives and that apart from law. The law is not made for a righteous man. 1 Timothy 1.9 So, my next question became, well, just how, how do we become transformed by the renewing of our mind? And the answer is clearly given in the text. We are not to be conformed to this world. The word, the word there is age, not conformed to this age. And the difference between conformed and transformed being one is falling in step with that which is not true of you as opposed to what is true of you where that we then see that our identity lies at the very core 
of our being involved in the activity that this chapter describes. And here is the final analysis of all this. We have been identified with Christ who fulfilled the law perfectly, who now lives in and through us by faith apart from law. As we entered into chapter 12, we actually discover that this renewing of our mind is a transition from doing, that's law, to being, resulting in transformation, which is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I hope I've explained that well. So now think of all those times, folks, that you've been told that you ought to do all these things by those who have been conformed to this world, who have not, as you have perhaps been, transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you'll see just how crazy and insane that is. They are no more capable of 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 functioning as the vine than you are, which is exactly what this book teaches. They haven't a clue as to what it means to be in Christ or who they are in Christ, if indeed they are in Christ, unless they are not in Christ, in which case they've only hijacked or stolen the Christian's identity. I mean, it wouldn't be wrong at all to call it identity theft. These imperatives personify our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I suggest to you, I believe that each one is a pixel that forms a portrait of our lovely Lord as he lives his life in and through us. And apart from these in, instructions, if you want to look at them that way, we wouldn't have that picture. I mean, how else could God express the very life of, of our Lord Jesus Christ through the Word? And He is the Word. Therefore, considering all of the imperatives of the 12th chapter and the source of all of that good and godly behavior, that is, from whence, whence it comes, as well as, as what we have been instructed concerning the flesh, which profits nothing, and a righteousness that is based on the faithfulness of God, he being the vine, we being the branches, having died to the law in order that we might bear fruit unto God, and are being blessed so abundantly, so that, we might minister the same grace to those who hear us, giving heed to doctrine so that we save both ourselves as well as them that hear us, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, knowing that for me to live is Christ, knowing that I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, not I, but Christ liveth in me in the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Considering the prayer of our Lord who said, Sanctify them in truth, thy word is truth. I have no difficulty, folks, suggesting the simple, straightforward truth that sound doctrine, which the world religious system has mostly abandoned, lies at the very, the, the heart of the very life of our Lord Jesus Christ, the living word. Who pumps through our bodies the very life blood that makes up his body, the church, and all the Christian life and service and worship that goes with it.
his life, folks, his life lived in and through our lives by a marvelous grace, a marvelous process that is based on faith, not I, but Christ. So, I don't know how many times over the years I've been accused of, well, Steve, you know, you're just, uh, I even had someone email me and said, Steve, I don't want anything to do with your effortless Christianity. That was their, I'd never actually heard it put that way before. And folks, listen to me. There is, there's nothing more untrue than, to, it's such an uh, unfair statement. Effortless? I mean, are you kidding me? It takes great effort to do what I'm prescribing here. Uh, to study, to show yourself approved, knowing, uh, trusting, believing, resting, abiding in, in Him, in Christ who is our life. Uh, these, these are not easy tasks. In, in fact, it takes, a, I believe, and this is just my opinion, it takes a whole lot more work than just merely you know, going about, setting about, trying to keep the law. So, what about all those who haven't learned this? I would never suggest that struggle, doubt, confusion, uh, and fear serve no positive purpose in the believer's life. God works all things together for the good. We know the law is our schoolmaster to drive us to Christ. Failure, failure results in our learning to depend on God and not ourselves. The, the desired result being a life of true service and, and worship. Worshiping Him for who He is and all that He's done for us. It leaves little room for discouragement, doubt, fear. You know, that's all replaced by joy, peace, and rest. And this is what Christ would have for us. I want, I want to direct your attention to Hebrews here for a moment. Where we read in the fourth chapter, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his let us labor, therefore, that doesn't sound effortless to me, to enter into that rest. So we come to see the needed truth. We become sure of our facts. We begin to realize something of what is ours in our Lord Jesus Christ, folks. Who we are in Christ. The, the appropriation of. The, the, the resting in those facts must be on the basis of faith, not struggle and, and labor in the flesh. We're told to count on what we know to be true of us in Christ as, as set forth in the Word. Isaiah chapter 30, uh, we read, In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. We're told to quietly and and, and steadily look to our Father in confident trust and, and thankfully receive that which He has given to us in His Son. And it, it is when we rest that God produces, yet, yet so many continue to struggle. I'm sure you're familiar, familiar with, you know, it's when we're weak, then we are strong. So, so many continue to do what even the apostle, one of my, one of our, my followers pointed out, the, it, it was an excellent comment, how, just how that Paul himself couldn't, you know, a Jew of all Jews, Pharisee of all Pharisees, couldn't even accomplish what Christians are going about trying to accomplish today. It's amazing how God uh, assigns us to our tasks, chooses a uh, what activities were to be involved in. It's all by grace. It's a... Uh,
the appropriation of the of that truth you, you, you the Holy Spirit makes it makes it absolutely crystal clear that this is his truth you you appropriate that truth in your life you rest upon those facts we're told to, to, to reckon to count on what we know to be true of us in Christ and it's when we rest that God produces okay but so many and we all we all know we all we all know someone I'm sure who continues to struggle I don't know how many emails I've received uh, you know or how many comments I've read where people have have said something along the lines of you know like how that they couldn't understand why others just aren't coming to understand these truths how why why they can't seem to grasp the 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 reality of of all this that it's that that godly dependence begins when self dependence ends so many continue to struggle until the day comes when without you you're hardly realizing it what you are seeking has found you what what you're what you are trying to grasp has grasped you so the moment comes when we know and 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 every vestige of strain and labor is gone we come to know that the old eye is crucified with Christ that the, the the new eye the new creation has Christ as its permanent life you know spirit with spirit have, have been fused into one the branch grafted into the vine the member joined to the body where that the problem of abiding in him it becomes as natural as breathing the more clearly we enter by faith into what is true of us in Christ the deeper more experiential and practical will be his work in us and the more Christ himself will be manifest in our life and character the rest of faith concerning our justification the rest of faith concerning our acceptance the rest of faith concerning our position in, in Christ the rest of faith concerning our identification with Christ in his death resurrection and ascension failure and and I it, it, I almost I just I hate using that word there he always causes us to triumph he always works all things together for the good so when I say failure you want to kind of put that in quotes folks failure in the Christian life is due to an imperfect understanding or outright ignorance of the fundamental principles that we learned in the previous 11 chapters it's it's an identity crisis of of great magnitude It's an important, it's a big deal, folks, to come to realize who you are in Christ. Believe me. Believe me, that's a very, very big deal. That's what I'm trying to get across here. Many who do come into an understanding of these marvelous truths of grace that you've written to me, you've commented on how that they've changed your life. Even you, at times, even I, myself, at times, we can, we can slip from grace over into the legal realm and seeking to produce some particular truth in our life, some particular, you know, just take your pick, any one of these 40, you know, that I pointed out here in this chapter. You know, we, we desperately, we, you know, I don't, just, just take, just take your pick. You see one, and 
I, you just really want that in your life. So you seek about, you go about seeking to produce it on your own. That's that's what I'm saying. And so you slipped over into the legal realm in seeking to produce some particular truth in your life. But you folks, we can't put ourselves under law in in order to to get ourselves under grace. We can't we can't put ourselves under law in order to experience these truths of grace any more than we can do that in the lives of others. That's why you never hear me talking about how you ought to, you know, take in control of your life. Boy, man, you just, you just, you, you need to grab onto the wheel here. You need to get, get in control. You need to whip your, your body into shape. You need to stop, stop, start doing this and stop doing this and, and, well, you know, look, there's plenty of that out there if that's what you want. You're not going to get that here. Once in possession of a truth, I'm talking about the underlying foundational truth that supports all of the rest, all of that which, which is on the surface, all of that which goes out horizontally. You know, let's let's talk about the first first let's let's concentrate on the on the vertical here, you know, from God to man, what God has done for us in Christ, who we are in Christ. Then we can then we can go ver horizontally with it, okay? In our lives and in the lives of others. Once we come into a possession of a truth, we're to rest and then he will produce. He will. God will. We can rest confidently in the fact that he will, because he says that we will. In actual experience, when we first come to see ourselves as, as who we are in Christ, the self-life often appears more alive than ever. Yeah, that's, that's really going to, you know, confuse many of you. But it's right, it's here that God would have us stand firm, rest upon his written word. So we see sin in our lives. The Holy Spirit is revealing it to us so that it may be what? Overcome in the flesh? We might clean up the old man? No. So that it may be dealt with at the cross. Our part is to take God's side against ourselves while the Holy Spirit applies the death of the cross to all that is contrary to him. We who are of Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. Galatians 5.24 We have to learn to do declare these truths to be ours in spite of appearances we are to walk by faith not by sight which is which is basically law and a thousand times you know maybe faith will, will be assaulted and fail you know unbelief will say nonsense you know I can't be really all that you know that God says I am but the labor of faith means that once again we believe and we declare it and as we follow in the steps of those who by faith and patience inherit the promises, then a, a new divine thing will happen within us. The Spirit will cooperate with our faith and to faith will be added assurance And labor will be replaced by rest. We'll know the peace, the joy that God intended for us to know. It's his heart, his desire, folks, that we rest in him and have confidence in him and trust in him. It all begins by knowing. We have to know who we are in Christ. We have to know these all, 11 chapters, people, 11 chapters 
Why would anyone want to jump to, to Romans chapter 12 and just go, well, God wants me to do this, be this this way or this, do this or not do this. And there's no foundation. Uh, it, they're just, they're, they're ministering to the flesh. They're feeding the flesh. They're actually pouring gas on the fire. The law is the strength of sin. It's where sin gets its its power, is the law. Folks, it makes no sense whatsoever to have the very fulfillment of the law living in, in us, who desires to live his life in and through us by faith, and us go about seeking, trying to accomplish the impossible task of trying to keep the law. We, we can't, we're, we're competing with Christ. Folks, it just doesn't work that way. Look, either you want one or the other in your life. You either want law or you want Christ. You're either going to be preaching one or the other. You're either going to be preaching law or you're going to be preaching Christ. Look, I love you all. I truly do. I get a little passionate when we, when we come to talk about the difference between... Uh, you know, our, how that we fit into the equation here. Folks, God has a process, and it's far greater, far grander than, than just you leaving you on your own, sort of like, you know, well, you know, the father just says to his child, okay, you know, this is what I want you to do. Uh, I'm going to, you know, leave you to it. Best of luck. Have at it. You know, go about it, you know, the best you can. I'll be watching, but you know, you you go about it the best you can and, and I'll be over here and I'll give you a little help if you need it. That's how a lot of Christians view the Christian life and there is nothing that could be further than the truth. He desires to be our life, not not be some distant bystander, you know. Helping us produce, you know, it's it's like okay. Are you kidding me? You know, God is going to look down, look at the branch, and he's and he's and as most many Christians believe, he's going to help the branch, you know, become the vine. Look, I'm not, I'm out of time, and I'm just rambling. I love you all. I truly do. Thank you for all of your prayers, your messages of comfort and encouragement, and support. Until next time. Thanks for watching.